Hi, welcome to Continental Drift Nets number two. Thank you so much for um, the feedbacks, questions, um, positive little thumbs up, that sort of thing that you gave to my first episode. I was absolutely amazed and uh, continue to love all of the feedback and the ideas and, and the encouragement. So that's been really fantastic. Um, I have a cheat sheet today and uh, at the top it says lift my head, uh, don't frown, uh, talk clearly and glasses up and hold things still longer. So hopefully I do a better job this week. So it's been two weeks since um, I last recorded and I've had a really busy couple of weeks. It's been beautiful weather here in London for the most part and um, we're here in our house um, or I'm here in, in the house by myself so uh, hubby's off golfing and uh, and I thought I'd, I'd put things together to, um, to do another episode. So once again thank you for the follow-up for the responses to my heel and sock dilemmas. Um, I I think I've pretty much solved that dilemma now and um, just starting to starting my second tube. Um, I've also um, got a couple of really small FOs. I've, I haven't had garments on the needles uh, for a couple of weeks and and in part that's the weather um, when it's hot like this or when it's warm you don't tend to put it on um, or tend to put them on the needles. But uh, certainly, um, I've got keen in the last few weeks. So today is all about the swatches, actually, and uh, and also mantelope. So that's going to be really fun to show you that. Uh, I don't think many of you will have seen the mantelope yarn. It's fairly new. It's from Spain. And uh, it's been really interesting to knit with, especially in the light of my uh, recent experience with Plotilope. So, so that's fun. So let's uh, get started. My very first uh, FO is um, a hat. My hat, my solar system hat. So basically there's the sun and all the planets. And it's been a great com talking point with um, kids as to, you know, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Earth, uh, the Platon, uh, Saturn and Jupiter and the rings and that sort of thing. And so the grey represents the distance between those, between those planets. And you can see that gets progressively further apart as we go. And it's a double-sided sock, so a uh, double-sided hat. So it's basically knit in a tube with two two um, hat crowns, two crowns, and basically my ends are inside that. And I steam blocked it so that I could use it today because I think it would take a bit of time to... So essentially you can wear it. Oh, now I've got to make, make my hair because I can't put it on without my hair out. Um, essentially you can wear it as a slouchy hat like that oops my mantelope is gone um or you can turn it up and wear it as a folded brim hat and you can wear it color color side out or you can wear it sorry the hair's really gone messy now can wear it grey side out. So, yeah, it's great. It's fingering weight, but it's double thickness, so it's going to be really warm. And um, I can go really slouchy. I really like it. There's lots of options colour wise. It's a fun hat. Fun hat. So, that's um, Gauge Dye Works. Uh, it's a fingering weight twisted sock. I think it's on uh, it's on my Ravelry page. Now I have changed Ravelry. Um, I'm now instead of LJC Oz, I'm uh, CDK podcast. Couldn't get Continental Drift Knits. It was too long. Um, but um, 
I could get to see Dead Kane podcast. So that's where you'll find me on Ravelry. And in the show notes, I'll be putting, uh, it may not be today, but I'll be putting all of the uh, links to both the patterns, the uh, fibre, and my Ravelry page, if I've got one. So I'm, I'm a little bit behind on that, but yeah. So that's the Muscle Bra Hat by Isolde in Gage Dye Works uh, Solar System. It's a fingering weight merino superwash, I think. So that's great. It was really good to get that done. It was a lot of stocking stitch. Oh, I don't mind stocking stitch normally. That sort of I think because you think you're wearing a hat uh, or you're knitting a hat that you think it's going to go really quickly. And because it's fingering weight and you essentially knit two hats, um, it seems to take a long time. So anyway, I, it's really great to have it done. And um, that was the yarn that my sister brought from Canada um, earlier in the year when I saw her. Okay, so the second thing I finished was my first sock. So it's not a, really an FO in the sense that, um, it's not really an FO in the sense that I've got a pair of socks, but I have got one sock. Oh, okay. Now, it's a really ugly looking sock. And I only finished it last night and I only weaved the ends in today. So when you look at that, you go, oh, that looks awful because it doesn't lie flat. And it just looks like it's got this huge bulbous heel. So I have a really, uh, from discussions with people, um, I have a very, very high instep. Okay. And essentially heel flap socks fit me really well. But because I'm doing um, fade or special yarns that I like to put an afterthought heel into, I really wanted an afterthought heel that worked. And I worked on, um, I reviewed Stephanie Permit Fee's um, Patreon page and she's done two sessions, two half hour videos on afterthought heels. Uh, which was excellent and probably helped me to understand the construction of afterthought heels. And I've definitely adopted her gusset approach, uh, but I've actually modified it even more because I think for me, the gusset didn't just quite work. Um, I'll put in a picture here of the heel as I was knitting it up. Um, and you can still see it's quite tight uh, across the instep. And I was trying to figure out why, I could not figure out why. Anyway, I'll show you the finished sock first. So, excuse the feet. Um, that's the finished sock. Sorry about the leg, the white legs. But you can see that's a really good heel fit. I'm very happy with that heel fit. Um, I probably will change the recipe just slightly for probably two less rows. It's just got a slight little bit of positive ease there or neutral ease, whereas I probably need a bit of negative ease. And um, you can, I don't know whether you can see, just in here, there's a little gusset and I'll show you what I mean by the gusset. So basically you do a series of short rows and I won't go into it too much because Stephanie has a fantastic um, tutorial on it and that really is her IP. So, so you can see my heel looks really different to most people's afterthought heel. Very different. It sort of bulges at the sides um, and it's quite deep. So, but the trick for me was actually not using half of the stitches. So traditionally, when you do an afterthought heel, you, you adopt um, half of the stitches. So you're working on a circumference, which is if your my, my sock is 72 stitches on a two millimeter needle, and uh, that creates a nice firm fabric. I'm quite a loose knitter. Um, most US patterns that say four and a half mil, I do on a four mil at least. Uh, sometimes I have to even go smaller, 
but uh, I'll kind of loosen it up. So I do 72 stitches on a two millimeter needle. And um, instead of doing a 72 stitch sock um, a heel, I do a, I take three stitches extra on each side. So that's 12 extra stitches. I creep into, the, you'll see, I just creep into the front or what, what is the front of the, of the sock. And that just gives me enough room around there, that way. So what I was finding was I was, I did it using half and I, and I was just finding this was still pulling. And I was thinking, why is it still pulling? I can't figure that out. And it, essentially it was because this circumference here wasn't big enough. The circumference around this part of my heel wasn't quite big enough. So by going that extra three stitches either side in, or extra six stitches in, in total, three this side, three that side, three on the other side and three on the other side, um, I, I ended up um, doing much, much better and getting a really good fit. So um, I knitted five rounds. I then did the small gusset. I knitted another four rounds, I think. And then I did uh, my the Stephanie's four, three, two, one heel. Um, and then I just decreased the number of times until I felt it was long enough. So I'll write that heel pattern out in my um, in my Ravelry notes and I'll have that heel pattern for, for now on. So that was really good. So that's uh, what I would call my ugly sock FO. But I really love these. De this, is, this fabric is Deconstructed Fade Sock and it's by Shirley Bryan Yarns and the pattern is my own and it's an afterthought heel pattern. And as I said to you, 72 stitches on, um, on two millimetre needles. So uh, I'll have a Ravelry page for those, but I haven't, haven't quite put that all together yet. But um, yeah, that's my other FO. So in relation to that, I cast on, oh, the other thing I wanted to tell you about that was the toe. So I wanted to talk about the difference between the 4321 toe and um, a standard uh, knit two rounds, decrease knit two rounds or knit one round. Um, you can see the difference there. And I find that is far better for my foot um, than, a, than a really triangular toe. So that's my go-to toe now. I'm really happy with that. All right. So I've just started my second sock and I just wanted to show you before I joined in the round, what I do is um, I can't stand working out whether I've twisted something and I know there's mods and I know there's things you can do and all the sorts of, all sorts of things. Um, but what I've decided to do is I normally do two rows and then I join. And that way I have no problems deciphering whether that's twisted or not. And I'll generally just do uh, my magic loop like that. Now, Chayagoos I absolutely love. I uh, am, am a convert, an absolute convert to Chayagoos. Um, I have two problems. One is the mini cable gets really kinked. Okay, so I've had some kinking problems with the, with the cable. And despite tightening with the pin, that's just fallen off. So um, I have to tighten them quite often. Don't have to tighten them on the standard cable or the large cable or the larger size needles. Um, and I use a pin. So a lot of people have said, why don't you use the pin in that hole? 
So you put the pin in the hole and you tighten. Um, I haven't used the silicon and a rubber band was suggested, so I might try that, but they are, they are, are becoming undone. They are coming undone and uh, I find that a bit of a problem. But it starts jagging and I think, oh, that's coming undone again. So I have to pull it through and tighten it up again. But, um, but the, and the, the cable is really kinked. I don't know whether you can see that. Um, so I don't know whether that's normal. It's the, only the mini cable. Um, so it's the sub 2.5 mil uh, one. But I always uh, connect or join in the round after two, um, after two round, straight rounds. And I find I just work that if there's, there's a tiny little hole and uh, I just fix that when, um, when I tie, when I'm, I'm um, tying away my ends or, or threading in my ends. So yeah, that's really good. Okay. There's stuff everywhere again. So there you go. All right. That's the hat, the sock. Um, I'm, I'm referring to my notes today, so I don't miss anything. I did do, um, I did do a couple of little things which have gone in the post. So uh, my husband's cousin had a baby at 28 weeks and little Leo is fighting hard in the neonatal, in neonatal care in Melbourne. And so I just wanted to do something for them. So I'll put up a couple of pictures here of what I've done. And essentially what I've done is use some leftovers, uh, cotton and cotton acrylic yarn, and I've created some baby bonding squares. And the baby bonding squares are so mum or dad can keep the, the, um, the fabric against them for 24 hours. And then that's placed into the crib with into the neonatal cot with uh, baby uh, to help stimulate um, their, uh, their bonding with mum and dad um, or with their parents. And then uh, also mum can use it then also as a stimulant for breast milk production uh, it, once it's been with baby. So I washed all the, I did four of the baby bonding squares and then you'll see a little octopus and the little octopus was very cute. I mean, it took me an hour or two to, to an hour or so to do. Um, it's a flat one, it's not a stuffed one. Some of them are uh, crocheted octopuses are stuffed, um, but this is a flat one, he's very little. Um, it's just 100% cotton, it was just a leftover yarn I had and um, sort of just create a little moon shape and then you do the tentacles and the idea of the tentacles is basically to stop the baby pulling out their, their tubes, um, they can, something for their fingers to go around and once again it can be used as a baby bonding um, item so mum can put that um, with her breasts where her um, milk is being produced and um, and that smell can then go to baby and, and increase that um, well-being of the baby in terms of its isolation. So that was a little bit of fun. And then I, out of some leftover Gage Dye Works colour wheel uh, sock yarn, I knitted a little hat. I don't know whether the hat's going to fit him. It's tiny. Um, and he is putting on weight, so that's that's really good. He's battling hard though at the moment, and uh, and uh, I don't know whether the hat will ever fit him, but uh, it's a nice little thing to have. So I've sent that off. I don't know when they'll get it. Who knows with the mail the way it is? Um, but you should have seen a bit of uh, those things by now. And um, editing Lisa did a good job. She did really well last week. I was well, a couple of weeks ago. I was very happy. It, it took it, it. It was quite drastic on the skill set um, to try and uh, learn how to edit the videos, but it was good fun. And um, and I'm hoping to make it a bit easier. I did that whole one, and I'm doing this one on my phone. And uh, but hopefully I am in line for a new computer. So I'm I'm keen to get that going um i should be getting that in the next week or two so that will make a really big difference to how easy things are to edit but uh 
yeah, really enjoyed um, making those little fun things and washed them all and so I've sent them off. I didn't even go with a card, just like wait and getting them off. I needed to just get them in the mail. So I, can, I messaged his mum and, and said they're on their way. So I'll, uh, I'll see if we can get a photo when, when, um, when he gets them. But uh, that was really good. That was a really nice thing to do. Uh, the other thing I've been mainly for, there's two things I've been mainly focused on apart from socks and finishing the hat this week. And that is the, um, um, some swatching. So I showed you last week the Neen um, yarn and I balled it up last Sunday and I swatched. So. This is the River Knits yarn. The top three are the Chimera, and the bottom one is the Neen Four Ply. And what I've swatched for is a shifty sweater. I really like that. I think it's amazing. So you'll see the different um, that's the lichen, that's the water, and then that's the chimera, um, that's the pumpkin. So they're the small blips and the big blips, and then I did small blips and big blips. So I did get a gauge, um, and the way I do my gauge swatches are I put holes for the number of millimetres. Let's see if I can get that. Okay, um, I put holes for the number of millimetres. So this is a three millimetre. And then I put, um, I put pearls for the 0.25s. So you'll see there, I don't know whether you can see, there's two pearls there, one there and one there. And essentially that means that was, that swatch was done on a 3.5 millimetre needle. And what I've been trying to do, and I, uh, I'm a little bit behind, but I need to do it. I've taken photos, is that sometimes I, uh, I'm not that keen on keeping swatches. I don't know what to do with them. They're all different. Um, so I'm actually, I actually don't often cut the yarn. I'll use another ball and then I'll tend to, or, or sometimes I'll cut it. But, but essentially I don't mind using the yarn again. Um, I, uh, what I normally do is take a photo, take a photo with a, um, and I'll, I'll put them in here, um, the rows and the, um, sorry, the rows and the stitches with the ruler on it. And then I can, so I can count on a, off a photo rather than in real life. And then I like to put those in as a project in Ravelry. And I tag it gauge swatch. And so I can search all my gauge swatches. And by putting in the yarn and the needle size, I can also search by the um, yarn or I can search by the needle size and in my projects. And I have a gauge swatch for, for them. So I really like that idea. I, it requires me to be a little bit efficient which I'm not always efficient, but I take the photos and therefore I know I can go back and do it. And I know I've got my needle size on here. So I try and remember as little as possible. So, because it, I'm not good at remembering. So, so that's my shifty sweater. The only thing I wonder, I wonder if it's gonna to be too light. I think I will like it, but I just wonder whether it's gonna to be too light a fabric and maybe right up if if you don't have the exact yoke fit it could it could be interesting to see whether that works but anyway I'm I'm keen I'm keen to at least have a go do maybe down to the yoke 
try it on and see where I get to. So, yeah. And I have to talk more clearly, apparently, because I fade off talking to myself, according to my daughter and a few friends that have given me their feedback. Uh, swatches. We're going to do so. We've been doing some more swatches. So I think last time I spoke to you, I was concerned about this Holst Super Soft yarn. Um, that it was a little bit violet and not so blue. It was quite. Um, yeah, it's got a really violet undertone, so which is not really me. Um, and I was knitting it, uh, that's a five, that was double, knitting it double. That was a five millimeter needle and the top was a four millimeter needle. Four, four was much nicer. Oh no, the four was 4.5, as you can see. Yeah, there's two. There's two um, pearls. So the top's 4.5. I reckon I'd even get away with a four. It's still quite a see-through uh, fabric, isn't it? Hmm, not sure. Anyway, I wanted to see what it did double. So that's, uh, that's one swatch. But I then put it together with that blue that I'd got from Drops, uh, it's the Kid Silk, and it did this. And I love it, I love this. So completely different. Uh, that was a four millimeter, yep. Four millimeter needle, the Kid Silk and one of the uh, whole super soft really really low hold that that way uh, and comparing the two colors I like this a lot better so I'm really happy with that really really uh, really happy with that so I'll take pictures of that swatch and what that means is that I know now whenever I use, if I want to try some Drops Kid Silk with some whole soup soft, I know on a four miller needle, that gives me a fantastic fabric uh, that I'd be very comfortable. And it gives me a gauge of how many rows and stitches. I, I suppose my, um, my gauge in the round is the same as my gauge flat. Uh, I don't tend to row out what they call row out where your pearl rows look different um, so I can knit a flat swatch was the recommendation is you knit in a round um, the other thing is my sleeve circumference I haven't ever noticed the difference but I do plan on actually checking my gauge of my sleeves against um, the body on a couple of my jumpers to see whether I actually have a different gauge but I don't that I'm aware of um, so I'm fairly lucky that way but I do know now, if I have that gauge swatch in Ravelry, I know that, that um, unless my knitting changes, which it hasn't for many years, um, that I can do whole super soft and drops at this gauge. So I don't need to do another gauge swatch, which is always a good thing. Um, I'm not a process knitter, really, but it has taken all my will to keep going on the socks. And it's only because I know there's an outcome where I can do it uh, really efficiently uh, in the future that I've persisted with the heels because I really want to wear hand knit socks. I love wearing hand knit socks. I still have to get over the I wear through them. Maybe I've just got to take more care of my feet and wear, wear slippers. Um, but I'd like to... I'd like to wear more hand knit socks. So for me, the process has been worth it because the product will be better and the product will be more efficient in the future. But I am a product knitter and not a process knitter in general. So the other, the other, um, the other thing I was swatching was my dark apple, whole super soft, and 
I was testing it with two different drops kid silk down really interesting so you wouldn't I would have thought the dark apple would be the dominant um, green however when I did it with the dark that's the fabric I got when I did it with the light that's the fabric I got which I felt was really different incredibly different so that's just so that's the original fabric and you can see how much darker that's pretty true to life you can see how much darker they are adding the darker it's only slightly darker um, kid silk and then you can see how much lighter it got it got quite mild uh, that was a really nice effect actually that marling and once again that was a four millimeter needle as you can see my um, I don't know four millimeter yeah so how's about that so it's, it's just been good to understand because once again, this process will mean I'm more efficient down the track because I've got three cones of this stuff. So I know that how it reacts with kid silk. I know, um, do, uh, do I like the fabric? Uh, do I like the colors? Um, I've been, I was really pleased with that blue one um, and the way it just changed the whole color, that whole violet nature of, of the Prussian um, holst. I was really pleased with that. So that was my holst swatching. My last swatch was a Manchalope swatch, which is too far away from me. Hang on a minute. I'll grab it. Oh, forget, I'm in my shorts. Sorry. You weren't supposed to see the upper half. Okay, the Manchalope. Manchalope is an unspun some of you might have seen it on my instagram my instagram is now uh, continental continental drift knits all in one word so um, some of you will have seen this on stories it's a unspun and essentially that means it's a roving and you might look and you go oh my god that's so like if you just pull it yeah i'll put it up there and it just pulls apart like that so it's very much like the Plotilope. It's softer than the Plotilope. I haven't touched neutered in, so that's the other unspun that I'm aware of. Um, this is held double, it comes double. I'll show you the um, plates in a minute. But this was done in a one, two, three, four, five, six millimeter needle. It, initially I thought it was a little bit holy. Um, you can sort of see the background through it a little bit. Um, However, the fabric is really lovely and I was bang on gauge. So I'm doing the Miles shirt jacket and I'll pop a picture of that up here by Ozetta, O-Z-E-T-T-A, I think it's Hayley is her name. And um, she's been doing a few projects with, with this. Um, uh, Manchalope is by Wool Dreamers and they are, uh, they are the source of the yarn in Spain, in the Manchego region, where the Manchego cheese is um, is produced, and it's a sheep breed, uh, and it, they're producing a number of yarns. It's distributed here in, or it's available here in London um, through Tribe Yarns, uh, their Tribe Yarns shop on Instagram. And they have a website and uh, I bought six plates and the Miles shirt jacket pattern for £47. It was very reasonable. Uh, so in Australian dollars, that was less than $100 for a jacket. And um, it will be a beautiful, it's got a lovely story. The fabric's got a lovely story in terms of the yarn. So it comes like the Plotulopi 
in 100 gram plates. But unlike the Plotty Lope, it comes in a double strand. Um, so it's, it's double stranded to begin with. And I am holding it double. So I think it would be a bit of a pill if you weren't holding it double. But it creates like a worsted or ar probably an Aran weight yarn. And that's 100 grams. I think it's 230 metres or 230 yards. I can't remember which one. And it's really soft. Uh, there is a bit of vegetation in it. Um, so you don't want to be freaked by a little bit of vegetation. I don't pick at it too much because in, in its unspun state, it's quite hard to pick out. However, once you've knitted it up into the fabric, it's it's not that hard to pick out if you want to. It'll wash out most of it, mostly. Anyway, um, so I have six of those and mine has pulled apart twice um, when I've been knitting. And uh, so all you do, excuse me, to do this, you can use water if you want, is you do that and it's together again. So basically you just keep knitting. So it, is, it has felted together, um, Generally, you overlap, you can do a little more, but you don't want to felt it too much because it, then the fabric becomes quite different to um, to the rest of the fabric, to the rest of the yarn. Now, you would sort of think, well, how do you, how do you pull it? Because, you know, I mean, how do you knit with it? It just pulls apart. Um, but actually, it's not that bad. So... I'm nearly finished one plate of the Miles shirt jacket, and this is my knitting. Essentially, uh, you cast on at the back, cast on at the back, and you increase, and it's a drop shoulder increase, and then I'm knitting down to the underarm. So essentially, I've got six more rows to go. I'm bang on, um, well, imagine this is my back, so that sits down, that's the drop shoulder, and then that's gonna go under the arm. And then you um, end up uh, casting on or picking up stitches for the front, the two fronts, knit down the fronts, and then join in the round. Although you're not going to be joining right in the round, you'll still be going backwards and forwards. So it is a 50-50 purling job. If you don't like purling, don't, don't do it. Um, but I'll just show you how, I, what I tend to do is keep this on the ground. Uh, there is a video on, um, on the pattern as to working with mantelope. Uh, I, it tends to pull straight up fine if you're working with it on the ground. And I tend to, I'm a, an English knitter, so I find it's no problem. It, you, can, you can be quite firm with it. I'll just give you 30 seconds. I'm doing a pearl row and you can see I mean I have it tensioned around my fingers but not um, not I'm not pulling the yarn tight I have a I think it's a little bit like you would use for color work or it's it's the sort of tension I would use for color work um, I haven't knit on six millimeter needles for a while and I, I actually am finding it quite difficult, but not not the yarn. I'm finding the size millimeter needles quite um, tiring. So I'm quite enjoying going back to the two millimeter needles, which is who am I? Like two millimeter, Ugh. You know, who am I? I am just not that person normally, but I, I am finding I don't mind two, three and four millimeter needle. It's, it's my wheelhouse, it's my happy place. So you'll see there, so I've just knitted that up and you can see it's really quite easy. It's, it's quite tolerant. If I, I, as I said, I've broken it maybe two or three times, but and that's normally only because you know it's caught on my button on my shorts or it's or I've sat on it or something like that or it's wedged under the chair leg and then um and it's pulled apart it certainly hasn't pulled apart during my knitting so um I don't find it too bad uh the plotty lopi was very similar the plotty lopi is 
a little bit scratchier. Um, I don't mind it, but but if you want to compare, this is incredibly warm. I would be really interested in how it how it knits up against drops air if you wanted a drops air type um, pattern. I'd be keen to try it as a as a drops air replacement. Um, it's just less processed and I sort of like, I like that idea. I like the idea of supporting a small farmer. Um, they're very personal and uh, you can see on their website. In fact, Tribe Yarns has a one hour uh, conversation with them uh, about how they started and about the Manchalope yarn and, and their background. So yeah, it's really good. I'm really enjoying it, put it that way. It's nice when you get some joy from your from your knitting um okay let me just check my notes oh i'm coming to the end that's good oh um just on the socks i did refresh my german short row uh session uh on uh, stephanie per mcfee's patreon page she does a half hour on german short rows and um i'm loving them again um oh yeah so two things i wanted to show you my two hot tips for today are i nearly finished this two hot tips are as i was knitting this i have a lot of trouble remembering make one left make one right make one pearl row wrong side make one left make one right and I have a long, I have a, a real problem remembering which way on the needle um, each one goes. Cannot remember it. Um, I've tried. I've tried. And I had 45 rows to do, of, or 50 rows of, to do of, of increases. It's nearly mental after about 10, hour, 10 rows. I was like... Oh, I cannot keep looking at the pattern to see which one it is and then back to the instructions to see which um, which way to uh, put my front needle or my, my needle through front front through to back or, or back to front and uh, so anyway I put a little note on my phone and so I put RS right side. Uh, and the first one was F two B, and the second one was two B F B two F or something. So I did a little shorthand note, and essentially I didn't have to look at the pattern again. So it was really good to just write that little note for myself, um, so that I didn't have to go back and do things do the same thing every time and once again that was about making me uh, a little bit more of an efficient knitter and a little bit less frustrated that I couldn't remember it so um, so that was that was my first hot tip is do some shorthand notes on your phone um, and as you're going along so for the socks I've been taking notes as to what I you know whether I've done five rounds whether I did eight rows of short rows or um you know what rate of decrease i did what what depth the decrease had to be so that was that was uh a good hot tip the other hot tip if you are a family that has braces in your family or have had braces and you've got uh you've got a lap what we call elastics hanging around the house i use these on my DPNs. So they're a tiny little rubber band and they're very sturdy and I hold my DPNs like that. So I have I have cases for my DPNs but where I am just carrying one set or two sets with me. Uh, so I was using these for the crown of the hat and so I wanted to carry these with me and, uh, and I, I noticed I had the my kids, my kids are like 26 to 30 and we had braces when they were 16. Uh, so I've had these elastics for 10 years and they're perfect. I've got a little packet of them still in one of my bags and um, 
I can't find the bag now. I don't know where it is. No, I'm always looking for things, aren't I? Um, yeah, so it, that was another little hot tip. Uh, probably, I've got a couple of other things I want to show, but I'm not going to show them today because I think we're reaching time on this episode. Uh, but I will say that I am going to modify my Pearl Soho Notch Hem tank top. And... Uh, Okay, so you will remember, possibly if you watched the last episode, that I have this notched part, which is part of the design, but I'm not wrapped in it. I, I find these edges curling and I don't like the way it looks. I don't like my hips being exposed there. It just doesn't work for me. So I thought, well, what can I do? I need to fill this space in and I was going to do a bright, colourful colour and now I thought, no, I don't need to attract attention to my hips. Not my hips, sorry. My hips are my hips. But um, so what I did was that's a cast off edge there. That's the inside. And so I cut it. I figured the worst that can happen is I have to take things back. Um, I cut it and I cast those stitches back on and that's as far as I've got. I did originally uh, pick up stitches but I had a line and I didn't like the line so now I've um, now I've uh, ripped out the cast on. I've got live stitches and I will knit down and I will connect in these sides as I go along and we'll see if we can fill the space. I don't know how it'll go, but I'm not probably going to wear it as it is. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. So this last two weeks, uh, little life updates. Um, I think that was all I had. That's all I had on my, on my little things. Um, Little life updates. We are closer to exchange on our house. Uh, we are hoping to exchange at the end of next week. Uh, this lovely house we're leaving uh, after renovating it. Uh, we've had it five years and we renovated it and we've been living in it finished for about 18 months. Um, and then we should be going to Australia in the middle of August. Or, or towards the end of August and then we might come back here for a month or two uh, that is all a bit up in the air and then go to New Zealand New Zealand so at the beginning of August we have to ship all of our goods so it's going to be a very busy time and uh, and I've had a grandson in hospital had my mum in hospital this week and uh, it's been a bit tricky uh, so they're all okay they're just dealing with what they're dealing with and um, mum certainly uh, was just a bit of a scare for her so she's not not ill as such and our grandson our three-year-old grandson has asthma and he gets a viral wheeze and ends up in hospital it's all very dramatic at the time but um, his parents are well versed in it uh, but it's hard being a long long way away so as part of the thinking in getting closer at least um, via New Zealand to to them all um, but yeah I think I haven't been able to concentrate very well this week at work and um, part of that is the kids um, or, or people being sick family being sick I get quite stressed um, and I make myself very available and so what I find is I knit a lot actually while while um, that helps me to take my mind off it it helps me to feel like I'm doing something feel like I'm being active and it's just really important to for me for my mental health to do and my anxiety to do uh, do things like that when the situation's out of my control so so that's been really an interesting observation and I think that's what the podcast is doing for me it's it's making me think about my um, knitting 
and maybe thinking about why I do what I do and what sort of knitter I am and when do I um, go to my knitting and when do I struggle with my knitting. So, so that's, that's all my crafting, all my making. So, so that's really interesting. The weather here in London is beautiful. It's going to be 27 later next week. Um, it's very typical summer. There's a little bit of rain here and there. And we've had a few cooler days, but that was quite a nice break. And um, uh, yes, it's lovely. And I'm very appreciative because most of my Australian family is uh, suffering through a very cold, very miserable winter. And um, I think it was about three degrees there, or one degree there the other day. And I know that's not cold as in uh, sub-zero, lots of sub-zero temperatures, but uh, it's cold for them and it's sustained. And I think that makes you feel a bit miserable and it's darker. They've just got through their winter solstice. So it's um, hopefully getting lighter now for them. Um, I think that's all in the life update. So I went to the Super Bloom London at the Tower of London. Our, and we also went to Dorset. Uh, my husband and I went to Dorset for a weekend last weekend. So at the end of this video, I've got some uh, footage of both Dorset and our time in the countryside and beautiful Airbnb we, we stayed at called Lonston Farm. And for our Australian, for my Australian friends, uh, it's spelt like Launceston, um, but they all laugh at me if I say that uh, because it's known as Launceston. The cess is uh, silent like Worcester. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's known as Launceston Farm, but when our, my Australian friends see it in writing, they'll see it as Launceston like the, our Tasmanian Launceston. So uh, that was beautiful. Uh, we went down to Pool to the sea. We went... Um, to Corfe Castle. Uh, I had a home day at the Airbnb. There was a beautiful outdoor bath, which some of you might have seen on Instagram. And um, I had a lovely time. So we had three nights there. And as I said yesterday, we just decided, hang it, well, what would we do in London if we were visiting? And uh, trying to think of all the things we haven't seen in about the next four weeks that we want to go and see. And uh, so we're, we, we went to the Tower of London. We have, we have annual tickets at historic royal palaces, so we can just go into the tower anytime. And we enjoyed that. The Super Bloom was beautiful, absolutely stunning. I would highly recommend it if anyone's in London. Uh, they've done an amazing job and the craftsmanship is stunning um, in terms of the willow weaving as well. Um, I think this week it's all about just work and house and normal life. And uh, we, ha we have some visitors coming the following week. And then um, that following, yeah, I'm not sure whether anything, we're not, we're not really going anywhere over the next few weeks. So, yeah, I'll keep crafting. And uh, if you've got any questions, please ask. Um, I'm more than happy. I'm loving having interaction with people. I really appreciate people saying it was like sitting down and having a cup of tea or it was very casual and very comfortable. I really enjoyed that, um, that part of it. And I love getting the comments. Um, if you could like and subscribe, if you're interested, um, that always helps in terms of, I know that it's, it's a journal for me, but it's also for community. And that's part of the reason that, that that's one of my multi-pronged approaches to doing this. Um, and it goes to more of the community if you like. Um, if you actually physically press the button for like and subscribe. So it, it, there's no pressure. If you don't do that sort of thing, that's absolutely fine. Um, it's just lovely if you've got this far. I've, I've really enjoyed it. So have a great, uh, have a great um, week ahead. And uh, it's Sunday afternoon here now, and I'm about to head out for a walk. And um, if you've got something on or if you're not too well I hope you're doing a bit better this week and I hope you get outside and um, if you can 
and uh, get a bit of crafting on. All right, thanks for joining me and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you.